Now, in the 30s accompaniment, uh, the style that Django did, um, what we call a pomp, there, there are different variations. Um, the one that I do the most is, I think, Django in kind of 1937, <laughs> which is very specific. It's very heavily swung. Um, at that time, the, the accompaniment of Django was very on, with accents on the two and the four of the swing, um, which is kind of opposite of the way that I feel that people play nowadays, that it feels very, I don't know, like a march. But then he was really putting lots of accents. Um, and he had a specific, specific uh, right hand movement. Uh, actually, it's both hands. Uh, I'm going to show you. So we break it into two movements. You have the cha-cham, which is up-down. And then when you finish the up-down, you finish up. So you do up-down, and you finish straight away here, and then down. Now, um, the movement of the up-down, it should not feel like I said it's two movements, so the, the up-down and the down. The, two, the movement of the up-down should not feel like two movements. It's just a shake of the wrist. It's a the nice uh, um, way to describe it is like uh, you take a match and you try to take it off. To take it off? Anyway. So it's just a shake. And then down. Now, in the style of Django, the param focused on the on the low strings, if you listen really carefully, you can hear that it's actually like a, sometimes, a power chord. He's only played this, and then with the taram, and then he falls on the rest of the strings. But not as a rule, not really free and, and free, but you focus on the low and the up, so... I did more tricks there, but but the bass is also another point. Um, if you listen carefully, when Django just starts the accompaniment, if it's the beginning of the tune or after his solo, he's doing down, not up down, but just once. So it's down, down, and then up down. So. So that, that's my my kind of favorite. It all depends. It depends on the tune. Um, but again, Django did it when, when you listen to the very early stuff, especially when they play fast, it's just... It's just... Down, 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 down. And everything the same. And when it plays fast, it gives you a really nice effect. Um, I always say that it feels like you have a floor and then the, the solo kind of bumps over it so it feels very comfortable for the soloists which is the important part um, another point is we each soloist will have a different preference he will like something else so you as as uh, the company guitar part of your job i guess to to ask him and to see what he likes not just that every tune you would accompany it differently. And also in the tune, you would accompany the accompaniment differently because like we said, dynamics in solos, you have dynamics in the accompaniment and you want to listen to the soloist and talk to him through the music. So if he's doing something, you might want to go there. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to, I don't know, to overshadow his solo, but you want to listen to what he's doing and react. Another important point is that taram is is not with a specific ratio of the of the tempo of the tune. Meaning, if I'm playing um, and then I take a slow tune, I will not do. It still stays. If you listen to the original recording of Nuage. Um, there are two 
uh, in 41 or I'm not sure, but uh, he plays on fa. And it's a really good example of uh, so. So it's slow, but from from pam, and soft, but the param is still still fast. So that's a good thing to know. Now with the dynamic of the accompaniment in the in the tune, I said that you will not play similar over the tune. You react to the other musician, but also Django very often in the second part of the thirties uh, will start shuffle, um, maybe in the last third of the tune, or or in the like when you just when you want to push it to eleven. So <laughs> when the soloist uh, gets excited and then they take another round and then he's doing his shuffle, which is basically the param, the up down, every time. So it's up down and up down also on the higher string. So this kind of thing. It's kind of hard to do because you want to be careful not to sound like uh, Hawaiian music or something like that. That's so basically, param, param, and we're alternating between, like before, on the lows and on the highs, but same movement. 